Every season has its own pattern. Every season uncovers a new story. Every season has moments that separate contenders from champions. Half the starters last year returning, and the addition of UConn transfer running back Robbie Fry, Coach Raymond Monica, and the Kutztown Golden Bears had all eyes in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference on them. When the Golden Bears returned to the field for the 2011 season, there wasn't a beat skipped. Kutztown opened the 2011 football season in St. Anselm College in New Hampshire. Offensive dominance from week one set the foundation for an electrifying season as the Golden Bears took down the Hawks 56 to 30. The Golden Bears entered week two versus Mercyhurst College, ranked behind the Lakers. At 17th in the polls, Mercyhurst was favored. Kutztown entered Tulio Field with a determination to win. Both schools started scoring fast on their first two drives. After his first touchdown pass, junior quarterback Kevin Morton extended his consecutive touchdown pass streak to 19 games. The second quarter showcased the Bears defensive as they held Mercyhurst scoreless. But Mercyhurst remained tough as they allowed zero points and the score remained tied at 14 going into halftime. Kutztown started the third quarter scoring quickly on the first two of its three drives. The unyielding KU defense held Mercyhurst at 14. The points continued in the final quarter. Both defenses did not allow any more scoring for the rest of the game, with Kutztown nailing the coffin shut on an interception by junior defensive back Alex Dinolfi with less than a minute remaining. The Golden Bears totaled 264 yards passing and 228 yards rushing. Scores were recorded by junior wide receiver Kobe Toole, junior running back Chris McCormick, senior wide receiver Eric Frazier, quarterback Kevin Morton, and senior wide receiver Josh Smith. Freshman cornerback English PA was named PSAC East Defensive Player of the Week after a two interception performance. Kutztown moved to 16th in the polls after the contest. I actually didn't know I was going to get in the game, so when my opportunity came, I took advantage of it and I just went, went into the game with the mindset that make plays for my team, these are my fellas, like even though I just came here, I'm good, I'm good friends with a lot of guys on the team, so I'm going to just try to help the team the best way as I can. In the first divisional game of the season, the Golden Bears dominated on both sides of the ball. Defensively, the team stifled Lockhaven's offense, only giving up 290 yards. Lockhaven University's quarterback Jared Burkett was sacked four times by senior defensive end Brett Moss and junior defensive end Carolus Bimba. He was also intercepted by junior defensive back Jason Ulmer at the end of the first quarter. Kutztown was even more dominant on the offensive with touchdowns from Robbie Fry, Josh Smith, Kobe Toole, and sophomore tight end Justin Horan. Chris McCormick also scored a touchdown with his 100th career catch. McCormick later injured his knee in the third quarter, bringing his season to an end. The Golden Bears moved up in the PSAC and Division II rankings and began preparations for Cheney the following weekend. With three wins achieved and a crushing victory the previous week against Lockhaven, resulting in a 49-6 win, Kutztown expected another triumphant victory against the lower-ranked Cheney. Wortham will take it, and he will elude the first tackler and cannot elude the second. They're going to hand it to Mastromato. Mastromato trying to get around the edge, and there is nothing there. 
The crowd is a little bit quiet. I don't think quite expecting what's happening. At the conclusion of the first quarter and a score remaining 0-0, Cheney was proving to be a tougher opponent than first expected. It wasn't until halfway through the second quarter that the Golden Bears started their reign over the Wolves. At the conclusion of the first half, the score was 14-0 Kutztown. And Morton's going to keep it himself, and Morton is going to get into the end zone with Back an exit. The broken eye, handoff to Fry. Fry, end zone. Morton mm -hmm. set up that bubble screen. It's Colby Tool. Tool to the 45, to the 50, down to the 40, cuts back. In the second half, the Golden Bears came out as the fans expected, with the first two touchdowns driving the team. Kutztown put up another five unanswered touchdowns, adding 35 points to their already 14-point lead. Up front, he does the rest. Good kick out block there by number 80. Kevin Morton tied Andy Brault's school record by throwing at least one touchdown pass for 21 straight games. Head coach Raymond Monica broke a record of his own. For the first time in his career as head coach at Kutztown, Coach Monica had his first shutout against the Cheney Wolves with a score of 49 to zero. Well, I think any time you get the opportunity to shut out somebody, I think it's good that, you know, uh, you don't give up no points, you should, you don't lose. So, um, you know, we try to do that every every week, you know, but it's not an easy thing to do, especially as many points as people putting on the board nowadays. Coach Monica is a special individual, <laughs> to say the least. Um, you know, he's always there for us, um, to go in there and just to be able to talk to him, you know what I mean, motivation guy, and, uh, you know, he just... He's just a, a special individual. He believed me when no one else did. You know, I didn't play football for three years, and he offered me a football scholarship to come here. So that's, that was the main decision coming here. And, you know, I remember telling him, Coach, I just want to be successful here. And he actually still remembers me telling him that two years ago, the first day of practice. So, you know, we have a great relationship. And, you know, the fact that he believed in me makes me have all the faith in him in the world. Coming off a strong win over the Cheney Wolves, the 12th ranked Golden Bears needed to keep the momentum going over a tough 4-4 four four Shippensburg team at Seth Grove Stadium. With the temperatures hovering in the low 50s and heavy rain in the forecast, it would be interesting to see how the Golden Bears would react. The game remained scoreless for only a few minutes until Kevin Morton gave up a fumble deep in Kutztown territory, which led to the first of many Red Raider touchdowns. Shippensburg continued scoring six more touchdowns, making the final score 49-7. This game marked Kutztown's first loss of the season and ended Kevin Morton's 21-game streak for throwing at least one touchdown pass per game. Yeah, whatever could have went wrong went wrong. Uh, you know, we played extremely poor, and that's my job to make sure that doesn't happen again. Our heads were getting a little too big. We were, we were getting a lot of uh, national attention. People, everybody was saying good things about us. I think it all got to our head and we, we thought we were better than we were. We feel as though we shouldn't have lost to them, so ever since then, you know, we don't want to lose anymore. In the game following their loss to Shippensburg, the Golden Bears took on their PSAC rival East Stroudsburg University in hopes of regaining momentum. They're gonna win. What else could you say? KU piled up 621 yards of total offense against the Warriors, making it the second time this season that they gained over 600 yards. Eric Frazier put the first points on the scoreboard for the Golden Bears with a 25-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Morton less than five minutes into the game. And the Golden Bears strike first. ESU answered with a touchdown but missed the extra point attempt nearing the end of the first quarter. The first of Robbie Fry's two touchdowns came on rushes into the end zone. Wide receiver Daniel Gay had his first ever touchdown reception on a 27-yard pass from Morton in the second quarter. With less than two minutes left in the first half, the Warriors added another touchdown and kicked off to Curtis Wortham and Josh Mastromano. Going into this matchup, Kutztown was a constant threat in kick returns, averaging 50 yards per return in each game. Roth will run up and boot it away. And it's going to be taken by Mastromato at the one-yard line.
Mastromato gets to the 20, down the right sideline to the 30, still going 35-40 to midfield. Cuts back down the right sideline to the 40. More blockers, 30, 20, one man to beat to the 10, five, touchdown! Josh Mastromato, 99 yards! How about that for a good return? Yeah, that was pretty good. I just use my linemen. I mean, they do like all the hard work and, um, you know, they just, they kind of make me look good. Like, they're just big, I hide behind them and then once I see a little crease, I just, I take it. But um, yeah, most, most of the hard work is done by them. They just don't get the credit for it. ESU closed the gap to 28-16 going into halftime by kicking a field goal. Robbie Fry started the scoring for Kutztown in the third with a 15-yard rushing touchdown. Tackler gets back to the 15, Fry to the 10, Fry to the 5, touchdown! Linebacker John Cryer returned one of three Kutztown interceptions for a touchdown. 25-40, 10, 20, 10, touchdown, John Cryer! Mastromato concluded the scoring for Kutztown with a 50-yard rushing touchdown in the fourth quarter. 10. On the defense, KU had forced a turnover in 16 of their last 18 games. Alex Denolfi had 10 tackles in the matchup and another KU interception. Steps up, throws, passes, tipped up to the air, it's intercepted. Andrew Hodges also picked off ESU quarterback Ray Wagner, had 12 tackles and forced a Warrior fumble to help clinch the win. Bill McMonagall had KU's lone sack of the day and got himself involved with four tackles. The Golden Bears came out on top with a 49-32 victory. Very proud of them, the way they came and competed and just fought, you know, for 60 minutes and taking one play at a time, one quarter at a time, and uh, they're very excited about this win because we needed it as badly as we played the week before. Up next, Kutztown traveled to Millersville for a matchup against the Marauders. The Golden Bears were looking for another victory, but would have to do so without the likes of Robbie Fry, who was sidelined with an injury. The Golden Bears turned to Curtis Wortham, who was up to the challenge. On the first play, Wortham set the tone for the game by igniting on a 41-yard rush. It was one of the four rushes by Wortham over 40 yards. He would finish the game with one touchdown and 199 yards on just 12 carries, averaging just over 16 and a half yards a carry. Wortham was not the only force on offense. Quarterback Kevin Morton completed 15 out of 17 passes and threw four touchdowns, spreading the ball to eight different receivers. The Golden Bear offense racked up 486 yards. The real story, however, was the KU defense. Brett Moss led the way, sacking the Marauders quarterback, Sean Quarterman, two times in addition to his four tackles, three of which went for a loss. Andrew Hodges had an interception, holding Millersville to 82 yards in the first half and a season-low 163 yards of total offense. With the final score 49-7, Kutztown earned an important win on the road. Uh, it feels great as a defense to know that we contributed to the offense, scoring points, because on turnovers they're capitalizing, helps out a lot. And what are you looking forward now? Well, we got to take it game by game and look forward to hopefully eventually making the playoffs if we don't lose. After trouncing Millersville, the Golden Bears traveled to Long Island to take on CW Post Pioneers, who were undefeated in conference play. Kutztown was up to the challenge, taking a 21 to nothing lead in the first quarter. CW Post rebounded, scoring 17 unanswered points in the second quarter. The teams were evenly matched in the third quarter, scoring a touchdown each. CW Post's defense was unable to contain the Golden Bear offense in the fourth quarter. A 68-yard pass from Kevin Morton, followed by a 46-yard run by Curtis Wortham, extended KU's lead to 19 points with two minutes to go in the game. A late Pioneer touchdown would not be enough to take down the Golden Bears. Kutztown handed CW Post their first conference loss and passed them in the standing. Way to go, KU! Another good win. Another, Another good, good win, win on the road, KU. Another KU win.
On a snowy afternoon, the Golden Bears took on Westchester University. Despite the conditions, it did not stop the Kutztown offense. Kevin Morton scored a rushing touchdown for the Golden Bears. Robbie Fry and Josh Mastromato rushed for a combined total of 286 yards. The defense only allowed Westchester 64 rushing yards and 98 passing yards. Kicker Jack Regeary nailed a 31-yard kick, putting Kutztown ahead by 10. And with Fry scoring a touchdown for Kutztown, the final score was 24-0. After their second shutout of the season, the Bears' Division II rank changed from 17th to 13th and had all the momentum for a pivotal home game the following week. The Golden Bears homecoming game was against Bloomsburg University, who Kutztown has not beaten in 18 years. With a record crowd in the stadium, it was time for the Bears to prove themselves and show the Huskies that this season was going to be a different story. Kutztown was the first to score with a field goal from Jack Regeary. Later in the first quarter, Robbie Fry extended the lead on a rushing touchdown to make the score 10-0. The next few quarters, the Bears took a commanding lead against the Huskies with two passes to Josh Smith. Smith at the 30, 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! A pass to Eric Frazier. Frazier to the 5, Frazier, touchdown! And a run from quarterback Kevin Morton to bring the Bears up to 38-7. Bloomsburg scored one more touchdown in the fourth quarter, but on the ensuing kickoff, Josh Mastromato scored on an 83-yard return for a touchdown. To the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 10. He's gone, touchdown, Josh Mastromato. He's done it again, 83. Kutztown had something to prove, and in front of one of their biggest crowds ever, they did. Josh Smith scored one last touchdown from a 38-yard pass to end the game with a 52-14 Golden Bear win. Man, from the beginning of camp, August the second. That's all. This is what we work hard for, and uh, man, it just it seems so unreal. It was a huge game, and uh, you know it was just an unbelievable feeling to come out with the win and and win the way we did. You know, 52 to 14. It was a, it was a big win. This win set up the Bears to face Slippery Rock in the PSAC Championship game. Entering the game, Kutztown had the opportunity not only to capture the school's first ever PSAC championship, but they could also guarantee themselves a spot in the playoffs with a win. Slippery Rock set the tone when they scored on their first possession with an eight-yard touchdown run by running back Hakeem Satterfield and took an early 7-0 lead. On the Bears' first possession, Kevin Morton would be picked off by safety Jason Nixon, but luckily the Rock did not capitalize. After a slippery Rock punt, the Kutztown offense settled down and put some points on the board, thanks to a 41-yard touchdown grab by Eric Frazier tying the game at seven. However, the tides would change for the Golden Bears as their team leader, Kevin Morton, would leave the second quarter with a knee injury and hand control of the offense to senior quarterback Marshall Vogel. It was shocking. It was, uh, you know, I, I've gotten injuries before, but um, never to the point where I came out of the game and couldn't go back in. So I think, you know, mostly it was shocking and, and kind of confusing to not be able to go back in the game and be with my teammates on the field. I was nervous because I hadn't played a lot uh, in college. Um, but it helps when you have guys around you that are also pretty talented at wide receiver and running back and up front offensive line. Um, so I felt nervous to play in that big of a game, but at the same time, I felt prepared with what we were trying to accomplish in that game. On Slippery Rock's next possession, quarterback Cody Enders would be intercepted by Alex Dinolfi. But on the next play, Vogel would be picked off by Brandon Waters on Slippery Rock's 36-yard line. Later in the second quarter, Kutztown special teams made a bad mistake by only kicking a three-yard punt. But luckily, Slippery Rock missed the ensuing 28-yard field goal that went left, keeping the game tied at seven. With only a minute and 17 seconds left, Vogel got into rhythm and gave the Bears a chance to score before halftime. But kicker Jack Regeary would miss the 39-yard field goal as the time expired. 
The Bears would start in the second half, but would turn the ball over, and Slippery Rock would regain the lead with a touchdown pass, making the score 14 to seven. Kutztown had an impressive drive converting on several first downs, but would turn the ball over again in Slippery Rock territory. On the second play of the drive, Jason Ulmer caught a game-changing interception. Vogel capitalized, completing a 16-yard touchdown pass to Josh Mastromato, tying the game at 14-14 as the third quarter ended. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, Slippery Rock marched down the field and missed another crucial field goal, giving Kutztown the ball with five minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. Vogel would go back to Frazier for a 14-yard touchdown grab to give Kutztown its first lead of the game at 21-14, with two minutes and 59 seconds remaining. Kutztown's dominating defense would clinch the title with big plays by Colin Henney and Carola Spimba with only 38 seconds left. This marked Kutztown's first ever PSAC championship in school history. It capped off an amazing regular season and guaranteed a spot in the upcoming playoffs with a chance to keep the season alive. It's, uh, it's a long journey coming all the way. To, I mean, we had, obviously we didn't play in this game last year. We made the playoff session. We didn't get an opportunity to play in this game. Um, I mean, a lot of credit, and I know it sounds cliche, but a lot of credit goes to him. I mean, you win one game and this guy battled for nine weeks and got us in this position. So, I mean, I truly mean that. I know it's cliche, but it's true. I mean, you win nine games, you, this isn't mine. It's not my job. And the Golden Bears look to continue their path to glory. Week one of the playoffs featured a matchup against the sixth seeded Concord Lions from West Virginia. Starting quarterback Kevin Morton looked to play after sitting out the majority of the last game with a knee injury. The first quarter saw both teams' defenses stand tall with Kutztown forcing a fumble. It was not until a Concord scoring drive late in the period that any offense was seen. The second quarter showcased more of the same until Kutztown scored just under five minutes into the quarter. After the first drive, Kevin Morton was sidelined due to his previous injury. They entered halftime tied at seven after a failed field goal attempt by Concord. The third quarter started with Kutztown on defense and forcing yet another Concord turnover. The offense then took over driving down the field and putting three points on the board from a Geary field goal. As it became a theme, the defense again held the Lions at bay, allowing second string quarterback Marshall Vogel to put the Bears ahead by throwing for another Kutztown score. The fourth quarter showcased a defensive stronghold with the Golden Bears holding the Lions scoreless until 57 seconds remaining in the contest. Despite gaining fewer yards than the Lions, Kutztown still had over 260 offensive yards with 165 yards rushing and 102 yards passing. Scores were recorded by senior running back Robbie Fry and senior wide receiver Josh Smith with a field goal by freshman kicker Jack Regeary. With a 17-14 victory, the Golden Bears made history again, winning the first playoff game in school history. A 200-mile journey to West Haven, Connecticut marked the second postseason contest for the Golden Bears. Bears started off strong against the New Haven Chargers with a touchdown run by Josh Mastromato early in the first quarter. Loyal fans packed the visitor stands anticipating a great game. Josh Smith would then leave the game with an ACL injury and not return. The Bears luck changed when New Haven scored their first touchdown. Kutztown answered quickly with a touchdown by Eric Frazier. Colby Toole's six-yard touchdown run gave KU a 21-20 lead near the end of the half. With virtually no time on the clock leading into the half, Chargers quarterback Ryan Asiaki threw a 44-yard Hail Mary pass for a touchdown. New Haven kicked off the third quarter with a touchdown. Kutztown countered quickly with a 34-yard touchdown run by Mastromato, putting KU back in the lead 28-26. The Bears continued to fight with a 19-yard field goal by Regiri that brought the score to 31-26. However, after 18 unanswered points off two KU turnovers, it became clear that this was going to be the end for the Golden Bears. Not going out with their heads down, Kobe Toole took in one more touchdown for a final score of 37-44 New Haven. This hard-fought game showed not just the strength of the team, but also that of the fans. The KU faithful continued to show their support for their fallen bears by cheering from the gates as the team left the stadium with their heads held high. I like the 
thank the administration for everything they've done and, uh, you know, the fans and, and the community that come out and uh, help us win. Because uh, to me, you know, when you play at home, every advantage you can get, you take it. And to me, it's always, you know, a couple points playing at home because of the excitement and the community behind us. All the support from the community, our fans, family, you know, it just it helped us so much out on the field. It gave us an extra, an extra player on the field, you could say. It's awesome, man. It's just a lot of love and a, a lot of encouragement. And, um, you know, playing in front of that many fans, it, you know, the normal person would think it's a lot of pressure, like, you know, oh, you messed up, but it gives you that much motivation to make a big play, you know. Knowing that the fans is there, cheering us on, it gives us motivation to play harder and harder each play. So when we know they're there, we just, we just, we just play off of them. It helps big time knowing that uh, people support you. It's, it's really a lot of fun. Like, this is the most I've ever seen um, the community involved with the football team. This is a great program to come to for anybody coming out of high school. I mean, I recommend Kutztown to anybody who wants to further their career in, career in football. And I feel like this team could be successful. This whole program could be successful, um, especially after the past two years that Kutztown's had. While the Golden Bears will be saying goodbye to several seniors, they still have several returning players and most of last year's starting offensive line as they look to improve upon the season and a chance to defend their PSAC title. If the season could be described in one word... Uh... Um... Uh, I could say... One word for this season is exciting. Pass is caught! Touchdown! Looking, steps up, throws across the middle. That pass is intercepted. It's Denolfi again. Fry big hole, 45-40. Still going, still on his feet. See you later. 10-5 touchdown. Determined, I would say. Back looking, he steps up. He pump fakes. Down he goes. Hello, Brett Moss. Go, son, go, go. go. Oh. Unforgettable, probably. Still looking. He's going to throw. Back corner. End zone. Touchdown. Getting some pressure. Steps up. Throws. Pass is intercepted by Pryor. I guess family. Just because that's how we all think of each other. It's just a big family. We do everything for each other. You do it for the guy next to you. Stuff like that. And um, we're going to remember each other probably forever. The champions. And the Golden Bears are the PSAC champions for 2011. Can you win?